Good morning. Can we all stand together and give thanks to the Lord this morning? God, we thank you for this day that you have made. We love you, Lord. We sing to you. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. For all my hope is in your name. And now your joy awaits my praise. We give thanks. And I give thanks for all you. Set my feet on solid ground. So here I stand. You are my God. Your faithfulness, my solid. As we lift our hands, the heavens open. So let's sing that. As we lift our hands, the heavens open, heavens open. So let our lives declare the love our God has spoken over us. And as we lift our hands, morning. He's good. He's great. He's faithful. Well, good morning, church. We are grateful that you guys are here. <laughs> but more than that, um, we're excited that God is going to do something in this place today. And so excited for that. And it's so awesome to see you guys as brothers and sisters as we just come here together and so at this time we're gonna greet one another we're gonna go to our left and to our right right and then we're gonna walk around and 
just tell everybody, tell anyone that I'm we're there. Oh, sorry, but I'm sorry. But hey, deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. But um, we're just gonna tell each other that we love one another, and so let's do that right now.
comes in Psalm 18 too. And it says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And I want that to be our prayer today, that we stand on God's rock and that Jesus is our firm foundation. And so in this next song, we'll sing cornerstone and i just want it to be the anthem um, for today that we believe that he, he is the rock and that through every storm through any situation we may not fall because we stand on him and it says that in matthew 7 and that's what pastor dave was talking about last week and it was awesome to hear that and so let us sing this together my hope is built on nothing less Amen. That Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name My hope my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Trust in you, Lord. Christ alone, cornerstone, we can make strong in the Savior's love and through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy game, my anchor holds within. And my anchor holds within.
dressed in his righteousness alone for they stand before the throne sing that again when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found we dress dressed in his righteousness alone. For let's stand before the throne in Christ alone. Join us all. We can be strong in the Savior's love. It's in cornerstone. He is the foundation piece that we build our lives, that we build our faith, that we build our belief. This morning we're going to have opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer. And I just, uh, I want to get an opportunity to uh, just invite you just to come to the Lord. Maybe for you this morning it's bringing a special request before the Lord. Maybe it's just uh, for you personally. Maybe it's for a family member. But I know also this morning we have, uh, I want to pray especially, I want to pray for Benji's uh, heading off to uh, 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 heading off to Ron. Almost, my mind went drifting on a couple things, but Rome, I know where you're going. And Hannah, you're going to Rome as well, going to school and uh, doing a semester abroad and and for all of our college students as well, I know we have some that aren't here today. Some already started going to school. Tiffany's here. Uh, we coerced her to come back for, for the weekend to uh, be with us this weekend. But even for our students who are going to uh, uh, high school, middle school, and as well as uh, elementary school, and for our teachers, I just wanted to spend a special time just praying for our schools and for our families. Just invite you as well. So... If you would, Benj, Anna, if you would as well, and any of would you come so we can pray for you, I'd love to do that. Maybe you want to come representing a student or a child or a college student. Uh, I know Mason's heading back to uh, Treveca here. He's not feeling well. It's okay, but let's pray for him anyway, right? And so, uh, and so I know you've got students and family members, and so you want to come and if you want to gather behind uh, Hannah and Benji, Tiff, I want to invite you to come if you would as well. And maybe you just want to come representing your student or come representing someone else or a teacher. I just think it would be great for us to represent our students, our schools, just during this prayer time. And again, if you have a personal need that you just want to come before the Lord, I just want to invite you just bring that request before the Lord. Let's bow our heads, can we? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your just your very presence with us today. You are our cornerstone. And even as we sang about this blessed assurance that we have in you, Lord, it's, it's with that foundation that we place our trust. It's of that foundation we place our belief, knowing that you are with us. 
that you are by our side. And it's with that foundation, Lord, that we, that we pray a prayer of blessing over our students and our children as they head back to school. And for some, there's, it's met with a lot of excitement and anticipation and energy. And for others, it's met with trepidation and some fear and just some lamenting of that transition into school. So, Lord, for that, we pray for strength and for help. Lord, we lift our school teachers to you, God, that those not only represented here in our church and administrators, but, but those across our school districts here that are in our communities. And we pray for your blessing and favor and protection on them. May you use them to be encouragement and, and a light in, in our world as they share your love with these kids. Lord, I think of our college students that are heading back to school, both in our community colleges and, and Point Loma and other schools that are in our area here, UCSD and, and others. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would just bring your hand of protection and guidance and wisdom in their lives. That, Lord, you would just guide them, continue to help them to keep their eyes on you in everything they do. Lord, we... Also, I'd lift to you this morning, Benji, Hannah, those that are traveling to school abroad, and we just pray for your blessing and your favor, that you would just watch over them, that, God, you would give them traveling mercies and guide them as they go, and thank you for this opportunity, and I just pray, God, it would be such a great experience, and help, Lord, help them to rely on you and, and lean on you in those days that just seem lost or lonely. So Lord, bless them, we pray. Bring them your favor. May this be a faith-building year, not only for them, but for all of our students. May it be a, a deepening of discovery of who you are in their lives and discovery of who they are in you. So we pray your blessing. Lord, I know there's a lot of other needs represented in our, in our church. I know there's a lot of needs represented in our community. Lord, we, we just pray that you would go to those needs and you would use us to help impact and, and rub shoulders with those that are in need that we might be able to be a part of healing and wholeness that you desire. So thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Thank you for uniquely placing us in such a place as this, right here on Mollison Street, that we get a chance to, to impact our community around us. May God, this be a place, a lighthouse for you. So thank you for what you're going to do. We trust you. We love you. And we thank you for this privilege we have to seek your face and bring ourselves before you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Mm. It's a special privilege every time we get to, to dedicate our children unto the Lord. And uh, it is a special privilege. Uh, privilege this morning to be able to dedicate Jacqueline Alexis K. Hanicrat Sullivan. That's a mouthful right there. I love that. But she's a, she's a handful too, right? Full of life and energy. Jacqueline, how about you come forward and bring your family with you, huh? Would you do that? Right? Fantastic. I just want you to know that you just look beautiful this morning. You do. <laughs> Alec, it's great. We got a chance to meet this morning. So glad to have you here. So good. Angela, I'm so excited. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, please. Oh, man, sure. <clears throat> right? A little slow on the uptake. Yeah, good. <laughs> Love that. So glad that you're here. Angela's parents, and Haley, Gabby. Love you guys. It is, again, 
a privilege to bring our kids to the Lord. And what this is all about is being able to proclaim and make a statement that I believe is a profound one. And I've said before, and I'll say again, that we do this in the body. Certainly we can do it by ourselves at home or in a place that's private and so forth. And, uh, but we do it in the church uniquely because it really says a message to not only each other, but to the family and to Jacqueline especially that says, listen, as we are bringing our kids and saying they are God's gift, we as the church and as the body say, not only we agree with that, but that we partner with you in this process, that it is about the body of Christ, that you're not alone. You're not alone. And as a result, we get a chance to rub shoulders and we get a chance to teach. We get a chance to love and hug and, and laugh and do all those things that, that get to help our kids um, keep their eyes on Christ and learn what that means and be able to struggle at times when that happens and, and fail at times and fall over and scrape a knee and, and fall over in life and be able to have the body as well as the family to come together and say, let me help you. Let's get back up. Let's walk this journey together. And I just believe that's what faith's all about. And so that's why we bring our children, not only before the Lord, first and foremost, but in front of the body to be able to agree together. So with that, church family, New Life Church, will you stand by this family as they are committing Jacqueline to the Lord? Will you agree together to say, yes, we will partner with you. We will stand with you. We will love and, and bring hope and joy as God continues to lead. If you'll agree with that commitment together for, for Jacqueline and for this family, say, we will. Excellent. Now, family, you have the same privilege to be able to join together and say, we commit her to Christ, and we will continue to point her to Christ. We'll continue to see God do good things and and, and we're just partnering with you in this process to point her to Jesus. If that's your commitment, say it is. Good. Parents, this is your, don't lose your flowers. <laughs> this is your opportunity and this is your commitment and that's why you're standing here today. To commit Jacqueline unto the Lord. And really, this is a gift from God. That God has gifted you, this precious young lady. That for the rest of her life, it'll be her choice to continue to grow and take steps toward Christ, which we are agreeing and partnering together. But if it's your commitment to say, she is God's, and we commit her to him. If that's your commitment, say, it is. Yeah, good. Well, it is uh, my privilege. You can just stay right there with mom. And I'm just going to invite, if you guys would, just can you, can you kind of bring closer? And you guys just kind of, yeah. <laughs> Come a little closer. There you go. All right. All right, Dad. Let's just kind of lay hands on. Would you join with us? We're just going to pray a prayer of commitment and dedication. Would you bow your heads? And don't just leave the praying up to me, okay? Let's just agree together and pray this prayer of commitment. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that Jacqueline is a gift from you, that she is your child. And Lord, we just thank you for this family. We thank you for, for all that you're doing. And God, even in the midst of all life's ups and downs, Lord, you remain faithful and we can trust you. You are the anchor, the foundation that we could live our lives toward and in. And it's with that that we commit Jacqueline to you. So Lord, we dedicate Jacqueline, Jacqueline Alexis today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we pray, God, your anointing and blessing on her that would just wash over her, that she would be a woman of God, that she would just strive to know you. And Lord, in that knowing, God, you would give her direction and passion and calling, that in that she would impact people's lives. She would know you from an early age. Lord, we also pray ahead for, for, the, for the young man that's going to be a part of her life at some point in life, that he would be a follower of yours, 
and that together they would live their lives committed to you. So Lord, we commit her to you. And thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that, that, that this young lady is going to experience through her life. She is yours. Thank you for this family and their commitment. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a hand, can we? That's great. Let's go. God bless you. I'll give that to you. God bless you. Love you. Good. Good job. Fantastic. Well, we're going to give to the Lord in our giving of our tithes and offerings as we continue to worship. And uh, as the ushers come forward and prepare, I just want to uh, point your attention as they come forward just to a couple things. There's a lot of stuff going on in the life of the church here in the next coming weeks. And so if you would grab your worship folder and, and, and look at it, and see the number of things that are happening. I'm not, I don't have time to highlight everything. There's a couple things that are, all of this is important for sure. But there's a couple things that are, that are really important for us that I want to highlight here uh, today. Just for, for, just for our attention. Uh, this week, starting Monday and Tuesday, starts our prayer week for us here at the church. And I just want to encourage you, you see the cards inside your your uh, worship folder just as a reminder and an opportunity for you you can fill these out and turn them in you can just fold them and put them on the table in the foyer there's a poster out there that you can even sign up and say I'm committed just to pray on these hours and and it'd be fantastic by the end of the morning to see that poster just filled up uh, but Tuesday night Wednesday night and Thursday night from 6 to 7 Tuesday Wednesday Thursday from 6 to 7 for 30 minutes only. And I know it's extra commitment and time after work. But I want to encourage you to come. And uh, we're going to meet right here in the sanctuary. And just have a time of prayer. And an opportunity for us to, to hear from God. And we have specific themes. Which are on that sheet. On the sheet here. The different themes for that night. That we'll focus on. It'll just be a, a, a short time together. But every day from Monday all the way through next Sunday. We're going to commit to pray. I'm encouraging you if you'd fast a meal and maybe it's a different kind of fast maybe you can just fast just the, the food portion you can drink water drink for a meal whatever the case is God's word teaches us that some things will only happen and 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 experience through prayer and fasting and I just believe God has something in store to teach us through a time of prayer so I want to encourage you join in jump in this week let's commit to pray will you join in will you help me with this prayer week this week let's make this a commitment together and I believe God's going to answer our prayer. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. You can even start off tonight. I know at Point Loma, uh, if you have the time and would like to, they're doing pray for Point Loma tonight starting at 6 o'clock. The details are in the worship folder here. Uh, but you can just kick that off by joining us on campus and praying for the school year this year uh, as well. All right. Well, please check your worship folder for a number of different things, and we will uh, uh, certainly be glad you did. On the right side of every pew is our welcome books. Thanks for taking a moment at some point this morning and filling that out and passing it down the row. And, uh, and let's pray for our morning tithes and offerings, though. Lord, thank you for this day. Thanks for the privilege we have to give to you. Thanks for so much that's happening in the life of the church. We are so blessed and privileged to be a part of this body. And we just pray you would help us as we take steps forward in, toward new life in you. So bless this time. In your name I pray.
Thank you, Seth. Man. Our prayer time this week, I was reminded that I said 6 to 7 for our prayer time on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I meant to say 6 to 6.30. Did anybody catch that? Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> 6 to 6.30 is when we are meeting for our prayer time uh, during, uh, during the week. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday. I hope you can come. It'll just be a great time to seek the Lord together. Well, grab your worship folder, would you? Let's uh, grab your sermon notes inside. We've, uh, we've been on this series for a few weeks now, a couple weeks, and we'll continue that. Talking about belief or believe, courage, and adventure. And, uh, and I, I really, as I was preparing for this series and anticipation of this series, I, I guess the sense that I got was, uh, was that we just kind of, Settle in on it. Just take our time to settle in on these, these words and what they mean for us as we move forward as a church. And so, so this is my third week talking about belief or believe. And, and I, I think in, in a way, it just I, I want us to really kind of uh, get a hold and a handle on, on God, what, what do you have for us as a church as we move forward? And this is we start our, our fall and we kind of start the new school year that we truly would um, just give attention to really helping us understand what God is teaching us about what it means to believe and where that function of belief moves into behavior. That as the body of Christ, we can live as God's word teaches us and understand what that means. And maybe for some that are here, uh, no matter where you are, I guess I should say, in your journey, whether it's newer in faith where, or maybe you've you're hearing, there's, you're seeking in faith. That's okay. It's a safe place to be. And so helping us understand belief all the way through maybe someone who's been walking with the Lord or have believed in Christ maybe for years and years, 30, 40, 50 years, no matter where you are in the spectrum, helping us understand the foundation of our belief so we can really kind of have this idea and foundation laid for us. And then what does that mean for us as a church and the body? What does that mean for us to, to live that faith out? Where does that, when it comes to maturity, and that's what we'll dive into a little bit more today, when it comes into maturity, where does that transition lead us um, as, we, as we move forward? So, so believe, courage, adventure. And, and, and so I, you see in your worship folder, both on the front cover and even in your sermon notes, uh, just some, let me kind of help define those words for us and where I kind of found those and, and, and kind of what it means for us. The word believe, I'm going to teach you some Greek words here today. All right, so uh, the word believe is pistuo. So, so it kind of the word belief is from the root word pistis. And so it's pistuo. Can you say pistuo? You got it? And so you see it in your sermon notes there, which really just talks about how I believe, have faith in. And that is, uh, amongst other verses, it comes directly from John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes, pistuo, that whoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life. For those who have faith, who, who trust in, who believe, um, that as Jesus, I am entrusted with, right? That, that, that belief comes from John 3, 16. Pistuo is the belief. So I believe. And I think what God's teaching us in, in, as a believer in Christ is that for those who believe, um, have a right standing with him. We'll look at that a little bit more later. But that's where that word believe, what we're talking about. And that belief should lead us somewhere. And that's what we've been kind of honing in on these first couple of weeks. It should lead us to behavior. Jesus said, for those who, who know me and who love me will obey my teachings, obey what my word teaches us. So there is a correlation, a direct correlation for what we believe to how we behave. And that movement kind of moves us forward. But for some, in that behavior, in, in, in what his word teaches us, that behavior leads us to, to say, listen, it, it's difficult at times. It's tough. Whoever said being a follower of Christ is just this easy, go lucky, never any problems. Once you're a Christian, once you're a follower of Christ, then, then most of your problems, if not all of them, are disappearing. 
and you're all good for now, right? Amen to that? You wish, right? You wish. Not true. And so in other words, as God's word teaches us, there are, there are some, the process of, of development and growth that, that are sometimes really challenging, of surrendering, of, of holiness, of what that teaches us, of, of forgiveness. And this is not something that is just a cakewalk all the time. It's not something that, that is just simple, and as a result, it takes courage. It takes courage. I'm going to teach next week. We're going to transition into this word courage. And I'm going to teach next week about the story of Peter uh, getting out of the boat. As Jesus comes out walking on the water and, and invites Peter to come out on the boat. And as they were petrified seeing this person walking on water. Oh, by the way, wouldn't you a little bit? Right? Be like just freaked out a little about the fact that someone... Is someone actually walking? What's going on here, right? Is this a trick of my eyes? What's happening? As they were, the disciples on the stormy waters uh, were kind of freaking out. Jesus comes kind of trotting up on the water. And he, they, he looks at them and they were afraid. And he says, take courage. Be courageous. Now, what's interesting about that text, I don't want to get into it too much uh, because I'm going to unpack it next week. But what's interesting about that text is that it's talking about a different kind of courage. And again, I'll talk more about that next week. But our Greek word for that is tharseo. Say tharseo. Tharseo, good. So that just means courage. It refers to God bolstering the believer, empowering them with a bold, you see it there, a bold inner attitude. I love that. For the believer, showing boldness is the result of the Lord infusing strength by his inworking of his faith or her faith. And so this, this idea of, of have courage, as we're going to learn next week, is a courage that doesn't come directly from you. <laughs> Take courage, Jesus says. And again, we'll learn more about that week, next week. But, but to believe, we need to believe and have a foundation of this belief. And as we then live that out, it takes courage. And then that courage leads us, that courageous act of taking steps of faith. There was about 22 of us that went to the evangelism multiplication training this weekend. I loved it. We had such a great time Friday and Saturday. And it was such a great event. And we talked a lot about, maybe not directly with these words, but we talked a lot about the fact that it takes courage to take steps and maybe kind of purposely start a conversation about what it means to be a follower of Christ or asking someone about what their belief is about that. Sometimes that's just downright scary at times. And it takes courage. But here's the deal. What God leads us to in that courageous act of living for him, he says, I've got more for you, which this is our third word, adventure. And that word, that Greek word is parasos. Say parasos. Parasos, right. And so that word parasos really is, doesn't mean adventure. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to be very clear with us. Uh, I'm interpreting it as adventure because what that word parasos means is it means more, right? And that comes from John 10.10 10, where Jesus says, listen, I have come to give you life and that more abundantly, more abundant life. That God has something more for us. And I just believe as I see that, and we'll, you'll see it here in a few weeks as I help us unpack this, that that more is the adventure that God has for us. That more is the adventure he has for me. And I, I, that I don't, it's, it's out there. It's something that I have to have courage to discover. That he will lead me in ways that will discover more. But it takes courage based on a belief that is based on, on his word, the faith that he's given you. So that's this series. This belief that leads to courage, that requires courage, that leads to more or this adventure that we have together. So that's where we're at. That's, that's what we've been kind of diving in. There's so much there that we, that we, can, uh, that we can learn. And so with that, let's, uh, let's kind of dive in here. All right, let me see if I can make this work. Maybe not. I may need someone to help me with this. I don't know why my 
or doohickey's not. Uh, yeah, but I don't think that was me, though. Ken, you're going to have to help me, or I don't know who's back there, but someone's going to help me. Okay, my thing is maybe my battery's dead. Sorry, I should have checked that. All right, go ahead and go to the next slide, if you would. So we learned last week that we, and talked about the fact of uh, this idea that, uh, that belief is established in faith. That faith almost like is the foundation that is a gift from God, that God gifts us with faith. I'll talk a little more about that in a second. And as a result of that, there's a spirit field or a God-given belief based on that faith in God. And as a result, behaviors then are the fruit of that belief fruit of that belief. Let me illustrate with, uh, with something that I think is a story that I heard uh, years and years ago that maybe you've heard this story before, I don't know, but this is a great story that I think uh, kind of h- helps illustrate this. It's a story of a guy by the name of Charles Blondin. I don't know if you've ever heard of him before, but uh, he's actually, this story was back in like the early 1900s, so like 19, actually literally like 1910 or somewhere around there, so years and years ago. And he was a famous tightrope walker, all right? And so he was this famous tightrope walker that, that made a decision just for publicity and whatever to, to string a rope across the Niagara Falls, all right? How many people have heard this story before? A couple of you. Okay, yeah, a few of you. Okay. So those of you who haven't, you're with me on that. Everyone who has, you can hear it again. So he would tie, he, he put this rope across the Niagara Falls, and he would, uh, he strang it tight, and of course crowds on both sides of the border came to watch, and word got out, and people were amazed, and, and uh, Charles Blondin went out, and he, he walked this tight rope across Niagara Falls. Huge span, huge span. And he, would, he was so good at it, and the crowds were ooing and on and ah, oh, blonde and cheering for him and that. And then he did kind of crazy things. He juggled across it, you know, and just kind of, whoa, wow. And he, he carried different things across it, weird things. He would, he would then, I, as reports show, he actually had some contraption where he like made an omelet while walking across the, true story, true story. So he made an omelet while he walked across the, uh, Uh, Sorry for those of you that are hungry. Sorry about that. But anyway, so he made an omelet walking across that. And then he he got a wheelbarrow and and, and walked a wheelbarrow. He rode a bike across that. And and again, the crowds were at this point, there was more people and more people coming. And the crowds were huge at that point and cheering him on. "Ah," You know, Blonde, Charles Blonde. And they were just going crazy. And and, uh, as he kind of began to address the crowd somehow, I don't know how he did it with both sides, but he did. As he addressed the crowds, he says, do you believe that I can walk across this tightrope? And of course, after all, they saw the all, yes, we believe, we believe. You know, they were cheering and cheering. And, and they said, do you believe I can do? And every time he would do one of these acts of different things, do you believe I can make an egg or an omelet across the other? All, sure, yeah, we believe, we believe. And of course, he did it. And and again, with the wheelbarrow, he would run the wheelbarrow. Do you believe I can do a wheelbarrow across? Yeah, we believe. We know you can do it, you know. And, and so as the story goes, near the end of his kind of little show and all that he was doing to, to promote all this, he, he says, now, how many people truly believe I could now carry someone in this wheelbarrow across the Niagara Falls? Oh, we believe. Of course, we believe you could do it. We believe, you know. And he just said, now, who is willing to volunteer? And as the story goes, nobody volunteered. Interesting. How much did they really believe? And this is kind of the essence of what what we're talking about here is this, this aspect of faith established, this belief established in this faith. And then our behaviors become the fruit of that belief. You see, I just just believe that all of us were born with this God-given ability to have faith and believe. We have. We've been born. Anybody seen the Polar Express? Anybody seen the Polar Express? Anybody know what I'm talking about when I say the Polar Express? Okay? Anybody not wanting to raise their hand because I'm asking them to raise their hand? Right. Four. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I knew you were out there. I asked that too many times. Okay, that's, that's like an old joke. I should stop using it. Okay. Right, so the Polar Express, 
It's a tradition. I've told you this before, I think, but it's a tradition for our family to watch the Polar Express every Christmas Eve. We finish the Christmas Eve service at church. Uh, we go home and have some snacks and some food, depending you know, kind of what we're in the mood for. And then we all sit around, and one of the last things we do is we watch the Polar Express. Even just this last year, we did that very thing. And we love the Polar Express. And it talks about that in the Polar Express. It talks about this belief and, and the, the, the magic of, of believing in, in that. And it is it's magical. And you know what? That's a God-given gift that I believe is, is important for us in our lives. And I love it. And I love the, the excitement and the energy that it comes with that. And I just love that movie. And it teaches us something here about this, about ourselves and what God has given it. But here, let me just say, those are muscles. Now, I'm using that belief as, a, as an example. But that teaches us something about other aspects of our life because we can look at a variety of different things in our life that we develop belief in. I kind of jokingly talked about last week about how none of you were concerned about the chair you were sitting on and the belief that, that, that these pews are going to hold you up. That there's just kind of this trust and belief that we learn to develop as a small child that, that we kind of learn and that belief is God-given. But here's the thing. All those muscles, those understanding of believing, uh, belief muscles, if you will, though legitimate and real, will end when we die. That, that's why last week I started, or excuse me, at the beginning of the series, I talked about how we believe in the invisible presence of God. That when our lives, our spiritual lives, uh, um, that's why when our, our spiritual lives in the daily, in the realm of only what we can see, when only we live our lives in what we can see, it kind of leads us to something that becomes challenging for us. When those faith muscles, all we do is live our spiritual lives in only what we can see, in that kind of belief as we were, were kind of taught and given as a God-given gift when we were just young and we've grown up with that. You see, those belief things become some things that belief of what we can see. But when we live our lives, our whole lives, with just that belief, I believe it kind of leads us to something. Go to the next slide, if you would. That when we only look at that, I think two things happen. Number one, we never really develop a spirit-filled faith or spirit-filled belief. When all we do is we live our lives with what, through what we can see. That belief. We're developing muscles that are legitimate and they are a real but they end when our life ends. And as a result, if we live our lives with only what we can see, we ne never really develop that spirit-filled uh, belief or spirit-filled faith. Our spirit-filled muscles go underdeveloped. And increasingly, we strive for what we can see. And at times we fight, <laughs> listen, uh, Anyway, we, we fight and we tend to fight for only things that we can see. Like different things in church that become silly to struggle over. We struggle over facilities and, and things like music and how people dress and, and a variety of different things. And we struggle and, and, and we squabble and talk about, which by the way, those are internal conversations that people outside the church go on. That's crazy to struggle over issues like that. And maybe for some, it's like, that's why I don't want to go. Because they're struggling over silly things. Because we, we tend to, to look at things that only of which we can see. Because our spiritual muscles and spirit-filled faith and spirit-filled belief never get really fully developed when all we do is look at things through our own eyes. We see other people's issues and problems or hurts that have been given to us and we hold grudges and we don't forgive because those things that we see are the things we hold on to and they're painful the second thing that i think happens when we only look through our eyes and you go and hit that next slide if you would dale is that we do things in church that result in little or no uh, uh, growth or kingdom growth in other words uh, we, we see no nobody coming to Christ or new life isn't happening that's the result of looking at things most of the time with with what we can see 
And that can be played out in so many different ways. And, and don't get me wrong, the things I'm kind of pushing on and, and maybe uh, stepping on toes on are things that are important and important things of, of different things of, of music and things of, of stage decorations and things that are, that are important to us. But it's interesting how we, we end up getting uh, uh, passionate, should I say, saying it really nicely here, about things that we can see and yet there are things that maybe we can't see, things that maybe connect to the heart of God that there's very little passion over. Maybe there's no one that is weeping or coming to the altar for or, or sending letters or emails about. I haven't gotten too many emails saying, Pastor, why aren't we reaching our neighbors for Jesus? And what can I do to be a part of that? You see, when we keep our eyes on what is seen, what we, what we, that's because we've developed that belief muscle from birth that is legitimate and real, and those things that we believe, and faith and belief is built on things that we can see. And what, what, what God's Word teaches us, and again, what I said two weeks ago in the beginning of this series, is that we, we see the, the, the things of, around us, but it's the invisible power and presence of God that is being invited. We're invited into that kind of relationship that is for everyone, that is real, that that is that spirit-filled faith that God kind of brings into our life. You see, God gives us spirit-filled faith faith at salvation i talked a little bit about this last week god gifts it to us you can't get more matter of fact the faith that god gives you at salvation is a gift from god he gives you faith at salvation you can't get more you can't get more of it the older you get you can't get i'm now i'm older and i've been walking with christ for several years so now i have more faith in god than i did when i was younger and you say well i can argue that no let me, let me kind of understand help you understand what i mean by that our challenge and our, uh, the opportunity, if you will, that we have is to develop, to develop that faith to full maturity. Now, the good news is God helps us to do it. But what he calls us to is to develop the faith into full maturity, not so much to get more faith, because God's gifted you with faith. When you were born, there's one common thing for every person, male, female alike, that when you were born, you were given life. Whether it was natural that it happened, whether it was a, a spank on the, on the backside by the doctor or nurse and, and to <gasps> breathe life and to begin that breath and what we see even when we saw in the dedication of our kids, we are seeing life given to us. Now, here's the thing. Does anybody here who is older than when you were born, which that was silly because all of us are, right? Every person here, do you have more life today than when you were first born? Do you have more life? No. You still have life. But here's the thing. Over the years, you have been maturing and developing in that life the older you get. Both physically, spiritually, uh, in a variety of other ways. That that maturity in life continues to grow and develop. And it's your opportunity to develop in maturity in life. And I just think it's the same illustration. Illustrated, it's the same as with our faith. That God gifts us this faith and then it's our opportunity to develop that faith into maturity. As he calls us to. And again, the good news is. Is he's with us. He guides us. He helps us to mature that faith. It's our willingness to, to say, God, I want to do it your way because I believe in you. I believe in what your word says. I believe in what that means for eternal life. So what's going to happen after I die, but also for this life that I'm going to have the courage to go on this adventure that you have more for me because it's based on this belief. I believe this. And he says that belief, that foundational belief, God just deposits into our life his very spirit, which is accompanied with faith that is yours. And it's a gift from God that no one can take away. No one can say, well, I earned this faith. 
Because I've been going to church longer than everybody else. I do more at the church than other people. So that's why my faith is stronger. No. No. You didn't earn it. You didn't kind of do more. So therefore you get. No. You don't get more. You've just. You've matured it as you've surrendered more to him. And in fact I would propose that. For, for any of us that would try to tout our. Our incredible faith in God probably is, is kind of putting up warning signs of our, of our pra- perhaps our immaturity in Christ more than it is real true faith in Christ. Because true faith in Christ is about humility and serving and surrender. It's having the courage to be on our knees. So, so with the time we have here left this morning, I want to illustrate something for us that I think will help us understand this maturity in life, this maturity in growth that I think could really help us today. So I'm going to use my trusty chair here as an illustrative piece. All right. Every single one of us was born uh, with this bent. We see it in kids. You've heard me teach on it before that we've we were bent with uh, um, this inward kind of desire to be uh, kind of do it my way, right? Every, every child I've ever met, right? No, I'm going to do it. No, I, that's, that's mine, right? You laugh because you know, right? So it's true. All right. And so uh, other than Jacqueline, because Jacqueline, she's angel, totally angel, right? Okay, so... <laughs> So, but, so as, as we grow and develop, the reality is that all of us, if I could use this chair as kind of a, a, a throne or, or just kind of the, the, the ma- major chair of life that just is who's in charge, right? This is the example of that. Those of you in our Wednesday Disciple you, ship class, you're going to see this, uh, know this illustration, you're going to remember it, okay? So uh, that, that we are, are this kind of example of... of uh, of I'm in charge. And so from a young age, I'm in the driver's seat, if you will. All right? Now, Benji, can I use you as an example? Help me. Come up here for a second. It's a, you'll be happy. Benji, playing the role of God, is Benji this morning. So stand up here on the top step. So when we first, and matter of fact, go ahead and turn that next slide, if you would. So this, uh, and you'll see it in your sermon notes here, because this represents chair number one. Go ahead and go to the next slide. And you'll see it in your sermon notes as well. And if you can kind of just draw a circle, if you will, just kind of from around my table to this step here, not above it, but to the step and kind of around me here, this kind of represents my life. And Benji, representing God, is, is standing at this point outside the circle of my life. And every person born here or born in, our, in, in the world is born with this understanding that we are, are not having a relationship. We don't have a relationship with God from the time we were born. Right? Make sense so far? And so in this relationship and, and, and in this life, as I begin and start this journey, I start this journey of me kind of being in the driver's seat in, in my life. Part of the reason why we dedicate our children is to say, communicate to, and to the child, but also to one another, that we are making a commitment that says that we are giving our children to God. But the reality is, is we also believe in believer's baptism, that our children, as committed to Christ, have to make their own choice to follow Christ. Make sense? And so in this process, we are saying that I am in the driver's seat in my life. And for many people... They get into their junior high, high school, college, young adult, adult years, and, and they still remain in this position. And we have a lot of people in our world, in our culture, in our city, in our community, perhaps a coworker, a neighbor of yours that is in this, kind of in this circle, right? Makes sense? And go to the next verse, or go to the next slide, if you would. Then we kind of learn, oh, one too many. There you go. Uh, and so then we learned this verse that those people, and I talked about this earlier in Romans 3.22, say this verse out loud with me. Can you read it out loud? Here we go. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Pistuo is believes, right? There's that word again. 
And so this understanding of belief that anyone who believes can have a right standing with God. And what happens is God, if you would stand right here, comes into our life. Right? And so go to, go to the next slide if you would. This is, represents chair number two. That this, and I'm talking about the transition of maturity in our belief. This, this transition of maturity in our life, which God is calling us to, to move from building the muscles that are God-given, that I'm kind of in charge, I'm going to kind of believe, and I have this belief and faith in life of, of things that I can see, that God says, let me help transition that into, into what you can't see into this invisible presence of God that wants to give you life and that you can have courage to have life more abundantly. Now, this is the transition that as I invite Christ into my life to have a right standing with him, Christ now is in my life. But here's the, here's the challenge of this stage of life where I believe a lot of Christians tend to stay for a lot of years of their life because this is where the rubber ends up meeting the road. Because what happens is I still want to be here because I'm used to this. And I keep my eyes on things that I see. And I, and I concern about things that, that a lot of things that I can see in this idea of faith and being following what God's word teaches us and taking steps of faith to go make disciples. As Christ calls us to commission every believer, go therefore and make disciples. Baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He calls us to go make disciples. But some of that is challenging. And so we say, God, you're in my life. Thank you for being in my life. But truthfully, most of the time, I kind of want to be in the driver's seat. And God never pushes his way into, right? Thank you for that illustration. He never pushes his way into the driver's seat of my life. He never pushes his way there. So he's with me for sure in this circle in my life. But the reality is, is I have at times difficulty giving up that control. And that's the challenge, the rub. Matter of fact, we read in Romans chapter 7 that Paul addresses this directly. You can go there yourself, read it this afternoon, where he talks about the fact, says, why do I do some of the things that I don't want to do, but I do it anyway? What is that? That's kind of our sin nature. Those are the things that I battle with, that I still have these old habits that kind of want to creep back in and, and move back into my life. And, but yet I want God to, to lead my life. I want him to guide me. So I want to have courage, but... I kind of want to do it my way most of the time, if I could. Is that okay? And there's things that I like, and my preferences tend to be more important than anybody else's or what happens. And so, God, rather than giving that up, I still, can I kind of, can I share that control, God? Can I share that control where I can kind of stay here? How about you just grab my shoulders, God, and just kind of direct me? And God says, you know, it doesn't quite work that way, because even if I grab your shoulders you're still going to kind of do some things that you want to do. And it's just like God says, do you trust that I can walk across this tightrope with this wheelbarrow? Oh, yes, God. Oh, I believe. Thank you, God. I believe you. And he says, would you like, be willing to sit in the wheelbarrow? Uh, hmm. How about I watch someone else do it? Then I'll believe more. I'll have more faith when I see someone else do it. Wait a minute. God says, I, you're not going to have more faith. I've already given you that faith. Well, how are you developing those muscles of faith? Go to the next slide if you would. Because this transitions us to where God is calling us to. If you would sit here, Benj. Because in Colossians 2, 6, and 7, well, actually, this, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but, I, but I'll read it anyway. Colossians 2, 6, and 7 says, now just as you accepted Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in truth. In truth, you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. So what he's saying is that as you're working out this faith, stand it again, if you would, just one second more. Is, is, is that as you're working out this faith and as we're in this journey together and I'm learning, God's word teaches me in this and that's why discipleship is so important. That's why continuing to learn to surrender is so important because he says, now let your roots begin to grow down deep and in that maturity process. And by the way, everybody walks through this process, goes from God not being in our life to God being in our life. We're still on the second chair until that, that growth development, because I learned to develop the muscles of faith 
that, that build me up to say, I believe this, and I'm going to demonstrate I believe this by my behaviors. Because belief is the fruit, or excuse me, behaviors is the fruit of belief. And so we end up living our lives based on what we believe. And so then it says, continue to let it grow strong. Because in that growth, we begin to learn in this development. Now you come back here. Is we learn in this, in this development that God ultimately says, would you allow me to take you on an adventure? Because I've got more to show you. And that more, if you'll go to the next slide, Dale, is saying, God, you're on the throne. And I'm going to learn to trust you. And here's the thing. When, uh, step back on the top step real quick. When you're here, letting anybody else on that chair is scary. I don't want anybody else to be on that chair. I've got my own issues. Matter of fact, if I'm exposed on some of the things that I'm involved in and some of the things that I do, and if anybody knows, especially the church, forget it. I don't want anybody to know that. So that's scary. I don't want anybody to be on the throne. Step down if you would, Benj. And so even this place, as I'm growing in Christ, I'm learning. Sometimes that exposure of that is, is challenging because I'm learning to let go. I'm learning to surrender. But here's the thing. People who have been in church a long time still find themselves in this place. And it requires full surrender. It requires consistent saying, God, it, it's all yours. I want to just follow what you want me to do. Even if that brings me out of my comfort zone, even if it challenges me, I want to follow what you want to do. And so we learn and grow to, to say, God, and when you, one could say, isn't that scary to allow that? And when you get to a point of maturity and developing these muscles, this becomes a point of great joy. That the more he has for you becomes a point of joyful living to say, God, I can't wait to the next adventure. Where's my cell phone? I'm ready to take this video, right? What's next? What do you have in store for me? And it's still challenging and it's still hard at times, but he's going to lead me in ways that continue to go where he wants me to go and I will trust him in this journey. That's the journey's on. Matter of fact, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Go to the next verse if you would, Dale. Go to the next verse if you would. Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give all of yourself, your bodies, everything about you to God because of all that he's done for you. That's that maturity of transition. That is your holy living and holy sacrifice. The kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly, this is truly the way to worship him. With our whole selves. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of the world. Don't do things, excuse me, Benj. Don't do things that says, no, listen, I want to do what everyone else does and follow that because that's cool, that's insight. God, you with me? You okay with this? Why don't you come with me, God? Help me out with this. No, 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 don't follow those customs of the world, right? But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, helping to direct your lives to say, you know what, God, I want to change. I want to be directed by how your word teaches me. Then I'll be able to know his perfect will for my life, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. All right, thanks, Ben. So, kind of ask the question what chair are you in what's your chair chair number one chair number two chair number three everyone goes through that process everyone does and it's just a willingness to say god i choose to believe i want you in my life i want to learn then there's the growth time and and there's a struggle and we work through that and we we hang in there we need the body that's why we get involved in life groups and discipleship because in that we learn and develop and grow together and we stay there for a while and learn and kind of the tug and pull and the adventure of that we begin to learn that courage spiritually and those spirit filled muscles are built to the point where that belief is beginning to strengthen and that faith is beginning to mature to a point where we're saying, I'm ready to, to take the next step. And that next step is inviting him to do everything in our life. Darren, why don't you guys come on up, would you? You see in your worship folder, I've put this in for two weeks. Go ahead and go to the next slide, Dale. I put this in for a couple weeks. There's some things that I want to challenge us as a church to move our behavior, or excuse me, our belief into behavior. That just gives you tools to move that, to invite you into this. 
And I just say, why wouldn't you want to engage on this kind of thing, to move that, that transition of what chair you're on? Engage in prayer week this week. I think God's going to use that in a powerful way. We did I had a fantastic evangelism multiplication training. I'm going to challenge us next week of what it means to reach our friends for Christ. I'm going to put a challenge out there for us. So, so next week will be exciting. I, I look forward to sharing that with you. Our discipleship classes, you see the dates. They're in your notes as well. But the dates for our, our discipleship classes are coming soon. And so be jumping in. If you've never taken a discipleship class, it's, it's really a great process to develop those faith muscles. Every one of us in here needs that, me included. Go to the next slide, if you would, Dale. Our friend day, we're going to do a friend day in October and invite some friends, and we're going to have some fun things going on here. And it's just a way for us to invite people into this process. Exciting ministry happening in, this, in September 5th, starting as our mops, our moms of preschoolers. And it's, it's just a fantastic ministry for us that's going to be starting. The details you, you've already been hearing about, and I can't wait for that ministry to start on Wednesday nights. And then over the next couple of years, we're going to learn to live into, we're going to learn to live into the, the gifts out of Ephesians chapter 4 that God's given us. And this is going to be our marching orders as a church to start new things, to missionally kind of connect with our communities, to reach people for Christ. You see it, to baptize people, to care for our flock, to teach well. And these things we are going to be invited into, all of us, to say, where are you going to find a place to begin not only to serve, but to see God mature that faith in you? How's your faith? How's your faith? God has chosen us today. God has chosen this church for this purpose, on this street, for a reason. And the challenge that I want for all of us is to see that faith blossom into maturity. And we will know the evidence of that by the fruit that it brings. Both corporately and personally. There's a great song. In fact, stand with me. There's a great song that, uh, that Darren and gang are going to teach you here this morning. That just talks about this, I believe. And I, I just love that. And I just, as we're singing the song, you're welcome just to join in and sing with them. But I want to invite you that if you're here this morning, you said, you know what? I, I need to turn my attention and allow my belief. Maybe I need to invite Christ. Now I'm on the first chair and I need to move to the second chair. Maybe you're on the second chair and you just need to continue to sharpen your belief to continue to, to see God do more and, and take this adventure. Maybe you're ready to say, God, I need you to take full control. Would you just be willing to be obedient to what he calls you to this morning as they sing? Let's listen to God as he speaks to us. Our Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. And through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus, our Savior, I believe in God, our Father, I believe in Christ, the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again.
believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe. I believe. Jesus, today as we head out into our week, into our day-to-day and the things we're going to do this week, I, I just pray you'll continue to remind us of this beautiful faith that you've given to us, that is such a wonderful gift from you, that you invite us into something more, that we can have courage to begin to see maturity happen in our lives, spiritually. That we would develop those faith muscles that, that, that you would guide us in, in ways that maybe we can only think or imagine or maybe we have a difficult time seeing. But God, you would guide us into that and we will be willing to say yes to you. So Lord, help us to strengthen and grow our faith so that we could make a difference in our families, in our workplaces, in our worlds transform us, God, to be more like you. In your name I pray. Amen. I want to encourage you, as people head that way, if God's speaking to you today and you say, Pastor, would you just pray for me? I'll stay up front. As people go that way, you come this way. I'd love to pray for you. Thanks for being here today. Go in the grace and power and strength of God. Go build your faith.